welcome to the Read All Over Show presented by Lit Carmy Bill and me, your host, Toy Thomas, author, blogger, and reading advocate. I'm so excited to share today's guest with you. Ellen Barton believes you should get your grit on and live your passion. Let's meet Ellen Barton. Hi, Ellen. I'm so glad to have you with us today. Hi there. I'm so excited to be here. Good. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, my name is Ellen Barton, and I am an entrepreneur. I own a business that I've been running for the past um, 13 years. I uh, That business is a video and marketing company, and, uh, and I'm a first-time author. I wrote a book that got published last year in 2021, and uh, that was huge for me. That was a big deal, something I've always wanted to do. That's cool. So I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get to know more about that book in just a moment, but um, I always have a question that I like to kind of start with just because the whole reason I started this was because I consider myself a reading advocate. I feel more people should read. And so before we get into, you know, everything, um, the segment that I start with is called On the Bookshelf. And so my first question to you is, why is reading important to you? Oh my goodness. I have always been a reader ever since I was like probably first able to read as a kid. And it's important to me because it's, um, I love stories myself, you know, and I love watching movies. You know, I love watching uh, good, sh well-written shows on TV, but there's no substitute for your imagination. And there's no substitute for getting lost in a book and really absorbing that message that the author wants to share with you, kind of stepping inside their world. You know, I think it's just such a great opportunity. I also love to travel. So um, having an opportunity to read a book and enter a different world, you know, a different time, a different place, yeah. someone else's perspective in mind. I, it just lights me up. Like to me, there's no happier smell or place than like a library and you walk in and you <laughs> smell that delicious smell. And uh, I just think like, wow, there's all these amazing um, opportunities here to explore all these different worlds. It's like magic. I love that. I like, I like that yeah. you say that um, you use the word imagination, because I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much you stretch your imagination when you read, as opposed to, you know, watching something on TV. I mean, I love TV and movies as much as the next person, but I do, I agree with you. You get to stretch your imagination when you read. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and I, and I too, you know, I, I love, I love good stories and I really appreciate well-written shows, well-written movies. And uh, because my business is video, um, I'm interested in the art of filmmaking, you know, that I appreciate that too, but there is no substitute for just curling up and getting lost in a book in my mind. Yeah, you know, that's um, that that's just my opinion, but I love it, too. And I, I I think it's interesting that more people seem to be embracing reading like I back when my kids were were small and Harry Potter was just coming out and all those kids suddenly um, reading was uh, cool again. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, that's really really interesting and then during the pandemic book sales yes went up you know it's it's something that people come back to again and again because I guess that escapism but the accessibility and just the the fact that books are so wonderful yeah exactly <laughs> they're just so wonderful <laughs> yes so my next question for you is um do you uh review the books that you read why or why not um, not always. And why not? Maybe I'm lazy sometimes. <laughs> um, but I, especially since I got into writing my own book, I realized the importance of writing reviews and try to do it, you know, most of the time. Right. I can't say I'm a hundred percent, but it is important. And I think, why is it important? Because, um, People want to hear, you know, I read reviews mm -hmm. before yeah. I purchase something. Yeah. People want to hear your perception of whether it was a quality book, whether you enjoyed it, et cetera. 
Um, it can help the author, obviously, if it's a good review. <laughs> but there's so many great books out there too. It could spare people from, you know, <laughs> investing in a book that's uh, maybe not going to be their cup of tea. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a firm believer in, you know, book reviews as, as a way of um, helping people decide whether or not yeah. they want to read something. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, so my last question for you um, on, for on the bookshelf is what are your favorite genres to read and why? Um, I actually really enjoy fiction. Um, I like um, a good novel. You know, I love, I just love characters and stories, character driven stories. Um, I like mysteries sometimes. And <laughs> I, I think it's just the intrigue of, getting caught into, you know, again, the story, I get so entranced into story and that brain teaser thing where you're trying to figure out what's really going on here. Um, I do enjoy that, but I, I also like, you know, just reading a good story and going into the world of the author. Um, that that's, it's just my, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. I I'm with you. I, I would say, um, I, I might go to is fiction, but <clears throat> I've been expanding my horizons and trying to read more nonfiction. Yeah. But, um, yeah. If there's a fiction book around, I'm going to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, me too. And, and I do, I'm reading at least one business book a month. Um, that's my 2022 thing that I'm doing. And I enjoy, I enjoy those books too. Yeah. Um, you know, again, I have my favorite authors or reasons for reading different books, but um, it, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I just, I just love books. Yeah, I love <laughs> what it. What I would tend to, personally, what I would not tend to read is anything like very technical or, you know, yeah. like super dry. I, I like stories. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to move into the segment that I call um, the open book. And this is where we get to talk about you as a writer. Um, I know you are a businesswoman and entrepreneur, but um, you, you did just release a book. So you're also a writer. So I want to talk about that process a little bit. Sure. So the first thing I want to know, um, we're going to talk about your, your book in, um, in the next segment, but uh, Ready, Set, Grit. Do you have any plans um, with that book moving forward or are you working on another book? Um, well, I just released the book last year, as I said, so I am still promoting that book. I understand that for this type of book, which is a business and mindset book, um, an author should plan to promote the, the book for two or three years um, going on you know, shows like this or speaking, um, you know, going to different events. So I'm not done with my book yet. It's okay. <laughs> it's still kind of early days. Um, but yes, I am writing a second book of this in the series. I just started working on it. Cool. And that second book is um, also about mindset. And it is a book that can be useful to those who own a business or, or wish to own a business. But the focus of that book is money and all of the stories that we have around money, all the blocks we have around money, all the um, nonsense many people have in their heads about this topic. Right. Um, it just fascinates me. And that's what I'm delving into in the next book. That sounds really good. I think that's a topic that never gets old. I do feel yeah. like with each generation, there may be like some new things that come up you know, people's ideas about money. So I think that's very on topic for whenever it comes out, it's going to be on topic. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank so my is. next question is, um, so you, you, which this actually goes in line with what you were just saying. That's funny that this is my next question <laughs> was um, as a writer, um, whether you're traditionally published or self-published at some point, you have to consider your own self-promotion. And so how do you approach self-promotion as a writer? Well, um, you know, shows like this <laughs> are great. So I can talk about the book and I really appreciate the opportunity to do so. Um, my book, I didn't necessarily imagine that I would sell a million copies of my book. It's for kind of a specific audience. And so how I am looking at self-promotion is 
opportunities to be on podcasts, opportunities to speak to groups of entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs. Um, you know, I'm just kind of like looking for those people that are looking to make a leap and haven't been quite able to do that or are feeling like a little stuck along the way. So it's, it's a process, you know, it's, it's like, I, I post about my book on social media. Mm -hmm. So people are, you know, occasionally they'll, I'll get messages back from people on social media asking more about that or inviting me onto podcasts or stuff. It's, it, it, it's a, it's a marketing is super fun. Really? <laughs> I feel the process. enthusiasm in that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's hard. My company, you know, as I mentioned, we do video and uh, video marketing, video production, and video marketing. And so we're really great at um, doing marketing for other companies. It's really different when you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. And you have to kind of, or at least for me, I, I find that I have to kind of like remove myself from any um, emotional connection yeah. to the outcome and just kind of treat it like a business. And, uh, you, you know, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a funny thing. It's kind of a mind game. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, it, It's definitely a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> so the other question that I have is um, I like to talk about people's writing process and, um, I feel like every writer has a unique process. And even if they can be categorized as a plotter or a pantser, um, especially if you're writing something nonfiction, your process is going to look a little bit different. So I'm just curious, um, kind of, can you give us like a basic outline of your writing process to create like your book? Yes, but I don't <laughs> know if I'd recommend people copy my process, um, but you sure I'll share it with you. Um, so, and again, this is my first book. I'm working on my second book. So, uh, you know, this is subject to change because <laughs> I've become more experienced, but my process is to get curious about the topic and then to start gathering tidbits of information. In in the first book, I interviewed a lot of people and just started taking, you know, ac accumulating notes, organizing the notes, um, eventually, it became clear to me what the chapters of the book should be. So I outlined the chapters okay. and um, then just began, began like filling in the blanks of like what information I wanted to include. Um, it's I, in my experience, when you begin exploring a topic in that way, information sometimes comes to you, you know, like the law of attraction, like you, or maybe you just wouldn't have noticed it before you right. start kind of seeking the information, but um, I would frequently come across a person that has something to say on the topic or read something. So I just, um, for the first book, I would just put notes in the appropriate places under the appropriate chapters. And then when it came time to sit down and write the book, it flowed very easily. Um, I would, I got into that space and you may have experienced it yourself of um, just being so inspired and, and being in the flow, you know, you're just like words are just flowing through you. And so like, I'd be getting up, sometimes I would get up at like three in the morning and I'd be like, oh, I have to write and um, just go and it came out easily where I got stuck. And I, I do not wish to repeat this part in my next book, but I got really stuck in the editing process. So I had like birth to this book but it needed work, it needed editing and cleaned up and you know, it needed a lot of attention, but it, I just couldn't, at a certain point I was like, oh, I cannot look at this book anymore. And I had to put it away for quite a while. And, um, and I had at that point too, some readers, I recruited some early readers that were, they volunteered to give me feedback and notes and, and all of that. Um, they encouraged me greatly to keep going. Um, so that was nice to have people, you know, getting some value out of, yeah. you know, even the early stages of the book, what was good. Um, and then I had a couple of people that um, I had a publisher that I worked with. And then I have a couple of friends also in the publishing world who were super helpful and gave me um, lots of really great feedback and notes and direction. So um, that I hope to pay forward one day. 
that's yeah that's good yeah. I, I love the fact that throughout your process it involved feedback from other people like you were interviewing other people and you found some readers to get feedback from I really whenever you have something like that I feel like you you have a better idea about the market when it does come time to start promoting it because you've involved other people yeah. you're not just in your own little box creating something you're getting feedback from other people and I think that's really great anytime you can incorporate that into your writing process yeah, for me, it was critical, you know, and I can only, I've only written one book so far, right. and, you know, I don't, like you, you have much more experience than me, so I don't know if that mirrors your process. Sometimes um, it does, sometimes it does not. <laughs> <laughs> there are some projects where you're just like, singularly focused, but there are other projects where you want to get that feedback, so yeah. Right. All right, so I'm glad to um, have learned a little bit about your process. And I, you know what? I like your process. I mean, I do think um, the second time you'll probably have a little bit of a different experience, but um, sounded good to me. <laughs> it's a little messy. Well, I think the second time I don't expect to have such a problem with the editing. Yeah. I, I think, I, I hope that maybe I'll put the book away for a week or two and then come back to it. Whereas the first time around, it was a lot longer than that. So and I was just like, I can't look at this anymore. Um, I actually so, find that for me, yeah. sometimes when I've gone to like maybe the second or third draft, I have to put it away for at least a month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I find whenever I write anything, you know, even a blog article, I'd like to put it away for a day or two mm -hmm. and then come back to it. it it's not a great method for me to write something and publish it on the same day, even if it's something short. Um, I really need the space to walk away and then, or even if it is the same day, okay, like walk away and come back to it. Yeah. But I, I need that like space, I guess, and that different perspective to be able to critically look at my work. See, that's good though. I mean, I love hearing that because I mean, everybody's different. So I understand that. But I do like when I hear, you know, authors or, you know, writers being aware of um, not necessarily limitations, but like sometimes, like you said, you do need to have that space from your work in order to be able to go back to your work and make it better. Yeah. So that sounds absolutely. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we're getting into the section where we actually get to talk about the book. This is <laughs> okay. a book signing. So first thing I want to know is Ready, Set, Grit. Oh my goodness. How did you come up with that title? Well, like, like I kind of alluded to, the whole process has been um, kind of not exactly a group effort or a community effort, but there have been people involved along the way. And the, the book is a um, reflection of some of the things that I had been going through in, uh, in growing my business or getting and getting through tough times in my business. So um, the, the purpose of the book is, is um, and I know I'm getting ahead of your question, <laughs> but the purpose of the book was um, or is to hopefully uh, help other people who might be facing similar hurdles. And the title came from um, some, some, I don't even know what to call it. I want to say sessions, but that's not really right. What sometimes when my friend Bonnie and I sat together and commiserated because we were both having trouble in our businesses <laughs> and we would, you, you know, you lean on each other and, yeah. um, business owners, you find your community and you, you talk to one another and help each other get through tough times. And I guess it's, it's not just business owners, it's anybody that's going through something. Hopefully you can find other people yes. to um, you know, help pull you through it. And Bonnie, my friend was one of those people. And we just, um, it was one of our, Bonnie owned a bakery and uh, has since sold her business and moved out of the area sadly. But um, at the time, she was uh, a great source of support and scones, I mean, really good scones. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we would just sit and talk. And, and um, I like the opportunity when you find those people that you can be truly open and honest with, yeah. and they can support you in that way. Um, that's what, you know, that's the relationship that we had. So it was just, as I was like explaining to her, my concept for the book, 
and it came out of this conversation and, and we were like throwing around different titles and then we hit upon together through our discussion, this ready, set grit. And we were both like, wow, that's pretty good. You know, that is because grit, grit as a uh, concept was so important to me and her is we were both, we were both pretty seasoned at that point in yeah. the trials and tribulations of business. Well, I, so. I love it. Um, it just, it really stands out. And so that's why I was like, that's going to be my first question. I already knew that. <laughs> so um, the next question that I have, which actually this is, isn't on my list, but it just stems from something that you said in your answer, um, just from um, having spoken to you briefly previously, community. Now you have a community, um, um, a business community, and uh, we don't have to get too much into it. But were you influenced by this network that, uh, did you create this network first of all, or is this just, tell me a little bit about this community and then we'll get back to the book. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so I did create a community of business owners. They're all over the United States. It's um, the community is called the boardroom and we have a URL, which is the boardroom.vip. Um, so people are wel welcome to check that out. Um, and I, I started it, I didn't really know what I was building when I started it, but I knew that I needed the kind of support I just described with Bonnie. You know, I needed other people who understood um, and, and maybe could give me hope because I was really struggling. My business was really struggling at the time I started um, this community. So I just put out a call to this um group of business owners that I knew of and was part of and said, Hey, you know, does anybody want to network on zoom? And this was like five, it was going on five years ago. So nice. zoom wasn't quite as popular as today. People knew it. So most people knew it, but not all. Right. And um, a bunch of people showed up. It was like 50 people showed up to the first call. And um, we just, it, I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, wow. And uh, so it grew from there. We started meeting weekly and then I started bringing in speakers and um, now we have this online platform, which um, is, you know, I mentioned it is uh, also free to join if anyone's interested, but it, so although I founded it for sort of selfish reasons, I also speak to so many entrepreneurs and the things that I hear from them are um, so much about imposter syndrome, so much about feeling isolated and alone, especially if they don't have a Bonnie, you know, they don't have somebody they right. can really talk to like yeah. that. So that's what I was looking to create. And um, that, I, I don't know how other authors approach their work or whatever, but for me, it certainly wasn't created in a vacuum. You know, my, it, it really um, came from my experience with all these people and and knowing that the process I developed overcoming my own challenges would be helpful to other people. And that kind of like psychologically encouraged me to write the book. And then um, those people I could also lean on to help me promote the book. And, um, you know, so it was, it was, it, it's been kind of a, a great experience having that community. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, I um, I can relate to that on many levels. I checked out the community. I'm excited about it. Um, but I also came from a community of writers because, you know, I needed that. And so I understand how being part of a community like that can inspire. Um, and so I just wanted to, you know, talk about that a little bit. But let's get yeah. back to Ready, Set, Grit for just a moment. So um, the next question is, is kind of... Um, kind of an open-ended type thing. Like, I know that um, you're going to be sharing something um, from a patron supports a little bit later, but I wanted to talk about, I don't want you to give too much away, but like, what are some of the like topics or chapters that you felt um, were like, obviously important enough to share, like in this book, like, um, cause I know you said, you know, a lot of this is based on the things that you were going through and you were hoping that it would help and inspire other others. So let's talk about that a little bit. Some of the either chapters or topics that you thought would really resonate with readers. Sure. Well, the book Ready, Set, Grit is the, those three words are also the, the titles of the three sections of the book. 
and ready. The first part is focused on mindset, you know, getting <clears throat> anytime you're looking to overcome a challenge, um, mindset is super important because we can impose these self-limiting beliefs on, on ourselves, which I guess was just really redundant the way I said that, <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we can impose these, these limits on ourselves and tell ourselves that we don't deserve something or we're not able to achieve it. And then of course you can't achieve it. If you can't believe it first, you can't achieve it. And so it, especially when you're struggling, you know, whether it be with money or whatever the, the situation is, anytime you're in a situation where you're feeling stuck or trapped, um, you first need to free your mind. Like that. You, you first need to believe that change is possible, like that. that you're capable of change. So the first section of the book is um, that that's what it's about. So it's calling upon people to really examine their mindset, shift it. Every chapter has exercises at the end of it because it was important to me that there's some practical action steps to help people you know, actually make change. It's fine to be theoretical, but I wanted them to be yeah. also actionable. Um, the set part of the book is about the foundation that one needs to lay, whether you are looking to create a business, a, a nonprofit, a, um, a, a hobby, you know, that you want to seriously focus on or like whatever it is, it doesn't have to be a business, but you need to put certain things in place to, you know, ensure that you're going to achieve that thing that you're setting out to achieve or else, you know, you're never going to be able to do it because you're going to go back to your old ways or your old habits or your old, you know, whatever patterns. Um, so laying the foundation for success is really important to me. And that's like getting your tribe around you, getting the right people around you, getting all the things you need in place so you can move forward. And then the third part is, um, is that grit. It's that action. Mm -hmm. And um, also it's a little bit of legacy, you know, believing that there's something larger than yourself that you're working towards um, in, in whatever you're doing, you know, even in your, what you're doing here with your, your podcast, you know, this is like, maybe it's bigger than yourself. You're actually having an impact on <laughs> the world in some way, you know? I love that. So yeah. I, I like that, you know, you, you, you've taken the title and you've actually like broken it up into sections and everything has a meaning. It's not just a clever title, like it has a meaning, and so yeah. I really like that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All thank right. You. So now we're going to move into the segment of the show where we just kind of have a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so this is Don't Judge a Books by Cover, uh, just because these questions are silly and you never know what someone's going to say. So my first question for you is, do you sing in the shower? Why or why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do not sing in the shower. I think my husband would um, file a complaint. <laughs> I, I love to sing, you know, in the car where nobody else is with me really loudly, but um, I, I, I don't have the best singing voice. I have to be honest. Yeah, I don't either. I, everyone, <laughs> everyone in my family sings like a bird. Um, if I sing like a bird, it would be a, a crow. So yeah, no. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm the same. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, so the next question is, if you could only pick one, candy, cake, or pie, which would it be? You can only have one. Hmm. Candy, cake, or pie. Whew. I think I'm going to go with, it's a tough one. I'm going to go with pie. Really? What's your favorite kind of pie? Go with pie. Whew. You're asking all the hard questions. <laughs> I think, ah, oh, man, I, I guess I'm going to just stick with the basics and say apple. That's a good one. That's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> I love to cook, you know, and I love a good, just, you know, that apple pie it's out coming out of the oven. It's steamy and fresh and you put a little ice cream on top and yes, no, that's nothing well, like it. <laughs> so good. 
All right. <laughs> so good. <laughs> all right. And so our last question, um, this one is, I actually usually pick all of my questions at random, but this one I picked out just for you. Um, so if you were going to appear on a, um, like a, like a well-known talk show or interview show, which one would you like, which one would be like your dream to appear on? Like what show would you like to be a guest on? Ooh, okay. <laughs> I, oh, wow. That's a great question. Well, I would say Oprah, except to her, I don't think that she's doing regular shows anymore. No, yeah. So that might not count. Um, I really enjoy Glennon Doyle's podcast. Oh yeah. You know, I've heard that podcast. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Maybe something like that. I don't know. I don't watch a lot of live TV. Um, so I can't even tell you what the, the normal interview shows are. Oh, but I do have an answer. Hang on. It took me a minute to get here, but I I'm here now. Okay. Um, it would be, um, it would be a radio show. Okay. Is that allowed? Yes, absolutely. Okay. It would be, um, fresh air hosted by Terry gross on NPR. Oh, I've heard she's of that. My favorite. I've never listened to it though. Oh, she's my favorite. She's um, with my company because we do video production. We often have to interview people. And um, I also have my own podcast, which is on hiatus. I, I enjoy interviewing people. And when I do interview people, I always like channel Terry Gross because she's <laughs> such a great interviewer. And I would love to be on her show. So that is my answer. And I'm sticking to it, even though Oprah is a, like also a top choice. Yeah. <laughs> if she was yeah. available. Yeah. yeah I, I think if I had an, uh, like a chance to be interviewed by Oprah, it probably wouldn't happen just because I'd like pass out or something. <laughs> I know. I know. But, you know, she she's so authentic and at least I believe she yeah. is so authentic and warm, and I'm sure that she's very skilled at putting people at ease. I'm sure, yeah. I think that it would be um, just really cool to talk. You know, she obviously is also an amazing interviewer. I think it'd be really great to talk with her. Yeah. And um, yeah, I would love to interview her, actually. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have um, pretty much come to the end for today. I've had so much fun talking with you, Ellen. Oh, um, me too, thank you. <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and just tell the viewers where they can find you or your work online? Sure, um, you can find me on um, my website, which is ellenbarton.com. And um, my name is spelled E-L-I-N. A lot of people you know, don't realize that. So <laughs> I should probably buy the other URL too, just in case, Just in case. but, um, but yeah, that's where you can find me. And there's a link to the book on that website, but it's also available on all, you know, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, all the normal retailers. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you just search for ready, set grit, it should come up in the search. And um, yeah, I, and if you do check it out, I would love for you to leave a review like twice. <laughs> exactly. It's so exactly. important to get those reviews. So yeah. I wasn't going to say this, but why not? I, I, I share all my stuff online. Anyway, I am doing a reading challenge this month that another author set up and it's called the Read with Faye Challenge. So every month you read something to help you either creativity. And so I decided to pick up your book to read as part of that challenge. So I won't be reading it this month, but I will be oh, reading it in the month you. of April. So I'm excited about reading that book. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I look forward to your review. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank All right. You. So um, we've come to the end, everyone. Be sure to um, stick around for the credits. I always have something fun there. And for my Patreon supporting, Ellen has some exclusive content just for you. So um, that's it for now. Until next time, stay safe, be blessed, and have fun reading. <laughs> Hi there, Toy here. And today I'm going to be talking more about Lit Carnival and what it means to read local. And so the question is, what does it mean to read local? And so I've broken it down into four things that read local means to me. So the first thing is being involved in local libraries. The next thing 
that I feel is important to the whole read local thing is supporting local bookstores. Next thing that I think is important about reading local is becoming a part of local groups. And then the last thing that I think is really important to the theme of read local, which is probably going to be the most outrageous for some people out there, is discovering local talent local writers, local illustrators, and supporting those people. So there you are, four reasons to read local. I hope you will let them run around in your brain a little bit, think about them, think about Lake Carnival, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.